You're listening to the Kingdom Project Podcast. These are discussions on biblical theology and interpretation. The emphasis is on context and grace. The goal is to promote biblical literacy by displacing and debunking most modern interpretations. The challenge is to engage in healthy conversation that may stretch, but sharpen iron. This is The Kingdom Project, and I'm your host, Marcus Hall. Alright, welcome to a fresh episode of the Kingdom Project Podcast. What is going on, guys? Um, thanks for uh, thanks for hanging in there. Thanks for listening. Thanks for subscribing. Please subscribe if you haven't and leave a review and share an episode. Get into the Facebook group and discuss things. Um, disagree if you want. I don't care. <laughs> do whatever you want to do. Uh, just, uh, you know, Hey, I don't know, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I'm doing well. Hope you guys are doing good. And, uh, you should know by the title of this, what I wanted to address. And so here, here, here's the deal. Let's just say it. All right. Um, here's the phrase. Faith is spelled R I S K faith is spell, spelled risk. How many times have you all heard that? Um, <laughs> I I heard it this last week. I either heard it or I saw it on Facebook. And I'm like, uh, I don't know. There was a time when I was like, yeah, yeah, uh-huh. So um, it goes into the whole um, culture, the prophetic uh, culture or the gifts culture, if you will. Now, here's the thing. Let me be clear. Um, not, I'm, I'm not doing this episode to, uh, put it down, put anything down or call, call bunk or whatever. Okay. Not doing that this time around. <clears throat> it's a different approach. Just try to give some explanation here that I think it actually makes a little bit more sense. All right. So, um, cause I was thinking it's not very risky and, and I'll explain that I think. So, um, if I don't know, it, it's always like be stretched, like you got to be stretched, right? Your faith needs to be stretched. Um, step out in faith, get out of your comfort zone. Um, oh, be willing to be wrong. Um, those types of things. And um, so, so what? What we seem to do is like, um, ah, man, it seems like we take these terms and these these ways of thinking that are worldly and then apply it to our faith, which actually is a supernatural thing because we're believing (laughs) in God. Right. And God actually grants us that faith. I believe because the Holy spirit is the spirit that has been poured out and we know the truth. God's law is written on our hearts. We have this conscience. It doesn't matter how you're taught what's right or wrong. You start to decide what's right or wrong. But there are things that you do that most of us inherently believe are wrong. And when we do it, we feel bad about that. And that's conviction because that's the Holy Spirit trying to reveal what has been suppressed in us. The truth that we have suppressed. Okay, that's Romans 1. And so when I say the Holy Spirit's been you know, pouring out. I do believe that in in Acts two, when it says Peter saying this is Joel's prophecy that the Holy Spirit will be pouring out on all flesh. It does not mean Holy Spirit is filling everybody. It's being poured out on all humanity. That is that to me means that because Jesus says all power and authority has been given to me because He sets and rules and reigns as King and Lord of Lords. The Spirit that's in that's all around is the Holy Spirit, all right? To, to And then he indwells believers, but then he is always drawing men in, trying to add new members to the living holy, holy temple of God, to the church, to the body, the spiritual body of Christ. And 
So I believe, you know, hey, if you're wondering what spirit is in control over the region that you live in because you're into that uh, spiritual warfare stuff, let me just stop you right there. The spirit that's over your region is the Holy Spirit because he's been poured out over the whole world because Jesus has power and authority. He has dominion and he is ruler of all. Okay, so we start to take these words and these phrases and these things that seem natural to us, they make sense to us, but then we apply it to our faith. We apply it to the supernatural, and it doesn't seem to make sense to me to start to do that. Okay, I mean, how, but how else are we to be logical and all that? I do, I know, I get it, I get it, but our faith, right, is not a risk. Now, I know how this is. If you're not used to this phrase, let me let me explain it is that it's it's the emphasis on um, operating in the gifts, which I still believe in. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I probably would have to convince some of you of that still, but I do. I still believe in those gifts. OK, so but it's usually in that context okay that's the context so you got to step out you got to be bold you got to do take a risk all right so it's risky how do you know if it's god or if it's you you know just take a chance so willing be willing to be wrong however um i would say that i'm not saying i've uh, i've cornered the market on this i'm not saying i've there's some of us there, there's a lot of us. There's a lot of us that don't put that emphasis on be bold, get out of your comfort zone, get God out of a box, and, and, and all that type of stuff. And here's the reason why is because when you start to um, delicately go through the word and you see Jesus as an exact representation of the Father and you get his teachings from from the the apostles teaching and because it was that was the inspiration of the holy spirit writing the new testament um outside of the gospels right and you start to you start to get a grasp on that and then you start to to use that and the new testament and jesus as your lens to to go through the old testament and interpret it in that way you start to to get the revelation of of who you really are and that you did die with christ you were crucified with him baptized that's a picture of baptism and you rose and resurrected with him as a new creation and that you are since you are in him you're hidden in him and you're born again and seated in heavenly places because you're in him that christ uh, took your sin and in exchange for his righteousness but he still remained righteous but he gives that to you he accredits it to you and um the reason why you're a holy thing you're a saint you're righteous you're holy you're you're sacred you're all of these things that the bible says is because you've been redeemed and god sees you because you're in jesus right so when you start start to when that starts to click and it's a process for us all i understand that and it took a while for me too and but when it starts to click you start to realize that it's not about whether or not signs and wonders are following you or how often you're operating in a gift um or if you're stepping out of your comfort zone or, or boundaries or I don't know what that was. I just heard a noise. My son. <laughs> it, it, these things were being stretched or whatever by by the new curriculum or the new, um, you know, Darren Wilson movie um, or whatever. Like, it, it's not like, oh, okay, now I got to go do that. Like, no, because I know that God is going to use me. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will work through me and do those things as he wills and when he does i know when it's happening and i just do it because it should just 
you start to go through a process where you, if you're a new creation, you eventually just start to operate in being that new creation, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So it, it has nothing like has nothing to do with how many times a word of knowledge happens or how many healings you've seen it doesn't become about the numbers it just becomes about your identification with jesus and walk just walking in that you're walking in truth which means you're walking in faith so that's the result so you know i i, I don't i don't get uh all like whoa like hyped up and i just like have to go for it all the time because it, it's not a part of it's not a just i don't know how to say it um you know i don't need to be the todd white of this area like does it matter to me because god's using me as he wills and i am created for these good works that i'm doing and sometimes i sin but i'm forgiven and i'm still righteous because i'm redeemed so um it, it it gets to be for me where it's just like oh when something happens it just happens cool awesome thank you jesus and and just keep rolling all right so however i know that being in that culture that's always driving that uh nail into just always driving it as hard as they can um wondering what else can we do or like wanting to create an atmosphere or usher in the presence of God or trying to get people to know like how do you know how can we teach people about the presence and it's like you you don't have to teach them about the presence you don't have to teach them even how to um operate in a gift um if you actually just teach what the bible says about god's presence if you teach about what the bible says about gifts if you take paul's teachings and you know the apostles teachings and you take all of these examples that we have in the word and you properly interpret it and you just lay you just lay it out <laughs> um it doesn't have to be a class it doesn't have to be an um uh, an experience and you don't have to try to manufacture or package an uh an encounter because it'll just happen because you're you're teaching people or you may be the student you know we're all students obviously but some can teach some can preach some understand the word um more and so you're supposed to help them by serving serving the serving god you're serving uh, them too by teaching them the, the word so they start to experience God through the word through the teachings through the apostles teachings through accurate interpretation and understanding that helps them go through the process of living out being a new creation all right so um, I think you know I don't know that that's just I, it's, this is just more of a talk you know I don't I don't know what I'm doing so <laughs> it's just one of those things though so like like um usually these phrases too: step out in faith take a risk be willing to be wrong this is all meant to be a comfort actually in case you do an act like in parentheses like or with quotations an act of god and find yourself not being in the will of god or something you know what i mean or that you are off why because it's your it can be driven by your ego it can be driven by your flesh right um and then we say no 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 it's not that it's it's also the name of jesus but even more it's my closeness with him that is at stake because this whole christian thing is about seeing what god's doing hearing what he's saying and doing just that okay yeah um we want to know what the father's about what's his business what's he doing i understand that but when you're just when you're always trying to look for that and try to pay attention to it you start to get tripped up because you've listened to this teaching and that teaching and read this book and this and went through this curriculum or this class and all that and you have all this and um all of this information that can actually cloud and um cloud your brain and actually cloud your vision some so where you don't know if you're coming or going 
and you're you automatically find yourself in any situation going like should i should i should i be hearing from god right now to this person or like you're in the checkout lane at you know at the grocery store and you're like is that me or is that god should i be am i hearing something is that a word of knowledge is, do that person need healed does that you know what i mean and it become it, it it becomes like this crazy little war sometimes in your in your brain and it can drive you nuts all right so um um but we we need to be able to know <laughs> to know when it happens and, and when you start to just get in touch with that reality of the truth of those things that I've stated about the word, about who we are as a new creation, like, you know, when the Holy Spirit's speaking to you, like you don't have to wait for the, the small, quiet voice or the, the low little whisper. You don't have to wait for someone to just be lit up like a, a billboard or whatever for, for you, um, to know that it's God. All right. Because, um, your faith isn't a risk, all right? Nor is it being risky. Uh, Hebrews 11 one says that faith is evidence, all right? Um, that means it's proof. <laughs> so, so what's 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 that about? Why, if faith is risk, why why does Hebrews eleven? Let's, let's uh, clickety clack. Here we go with the keyboards again it's by faith now faith is the assurance of things hoped for the conviction of things not seen for for by it the people of old received their uh, com commendation by faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of god so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible all right and then he goes and this is the the faith chapter but we still want to say faith is spelled risk all right I, I believe this goes back to john wimber so the best of my knowledge i could trace it back to him he was um the fo uh, founder of the vineyard and um that whole uh the new wave i guess of holy spirit ministry and power evangelism it started to happen in the um in the 80s and still going to today even though he's passed away um but um, and, and I like John Wimber. He was very balanced. Um, he actually ended up at the Toronto blessing was going on at the vineyard airport. Um, that's where that started taking place. And he actually ended up uh, saying, no, this is going to have to stop or, uh, you know, um, or we're pulling the vineyard from it. And they said, we're going to keep it going. So he pulled his association. He pulled the church, um, out of it because, um, it started to get too, uh, too crazy even for him really. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you know, so you got to be, be, be able to do things like that. So, you know, some people would say, well, maybe that was risky. You know, I don't know. Um, <laughs> anyway, anyway, that's where I think that really came from. So we've just built on that. Um, we, it, it, we, we believe that faith is a risk. Then we settle for, we can, I think settle for insecurity rather than actually increasing our sensitivity to that assurance all right and that evidence um now it just depends i guess yeah it may that, that could just be me you know i don't know but but then but but if it, it, if that is the case then you can actually get close then to the edge of of of, of a fall or a slope that ends up turning into just works by the flesh that it's just something you want to see something that you want to operate in it's the power that you want and that's what drives you is the power and um things happening and experiences and encounters and all that becomes the trip i guess and sort of addictive and you just want more and that's what you go by but sometimes people are fueled by the attention or the recognition that it gets or how many likes it gets on facebook and things like that because they um you know they have the anointing or whatever on them and 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 it can you know the power appeals to the the flesh so um I, you know i think god's assurance gives us boldness um that that faith and that that, that assurance and that evidence 
gives us the boldness to be and and do the things that that should just be natural to us to do as as believers and it doesn't even have to go into the category of gifts but just knowing the gospel and being able to share the gospel and doing it under the law of love in which we're a part of and we're in because uh, uh, we're in the new covenant um and i think I think then if we 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 see it more uh, uh, of a risk and being risky then ignoring that this the signal of a a, a no assurance type of uh, faith then rips us out from his rest and there is no righteousness peace and joy there is no comfort there uh, um, and there is no rest because we're we're all, always trying to to work to attain something and 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 we're not shouldn't be about works of the flesh or works to accomplish things and it, it can make us vulnerable then and it makes us vulnerable to our compulsions and compulsions of others around us and compulsions of man all right so um <laughs> so uh yeah I, I i think that is something you know uh to to look out for so I, I would rather just be filled with his grace and, and desire um, his desire to be um, uh, uncontainable in me. Um, and, and, and when I try to not do something that I can't help but to do it because I can't hold it in. You know what I mean? Um, you know, and I think that's why I've got such a passion for theology and, and just just the word itself and, and just trying to exposit verse by verse in my sermons is like that's what um, drives me because to me in my personal um, Christian you know life it's once I really started to look at the word and rightly divide it where so much freedom and so much of his presence actually like sprung out of was that and that his it is living and active you know sharper than any two-edged sword you know so um um and that 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 required no risk on my behalf at all and i can i can talk to it you know i can talk to anybody about about the gospel and stuff and i i do a lot a lot of times a lot of my days at work are <laughs> are filled with that and, and just encouraging people or, or sharing the gospel with them or sharing the gospel to them differently than what they grew up with because it was legalism or some sort of you know uh, mixed bag of it all right um so you know we're 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 not we shouldn't be we shouldn't be tr trained ourselves to have it the way we want, nor should we be training up other Christians to have it the way they want either. All right. Whenever someone wants a word or demands a sign or wants that or thinks the church is alive because, um, it, you know, or has to ask the question, is it a spirit filled church? Every church is spirit filled. <laughs> every church is because every believer is spirit filled and um man i got some high little squeaks there um you know and and, and then when somebody's always chasing chasing the word or the sign or whatever then all they're doing uh, they're never fully um fulfilled by that because they have to keep going back for more sometimes people cycle out of it and it takes a couple of years um but it, it just becomes like it becomes idolatry honestly and then so you know christ's crucifixion then um kind of almost that, that if his crucifixion is also my death then it can it, it can be end up being used to entertaining every whim whim of, of man that's that's under under the the guise uh, 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 of doing God's will, um, and, and our relationship, our Christianity, the, the unity of the Spirit, the unity um, of faith, and 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 doctrine and theology, and 
even the experiences that we have because of the Holy Spirit or just in fellowship with others in the church and the body actually should should all be summed up that Christianity is about freedom. It's about serving God and about doing good works unto him and also exploring and enjoying our union with God because we're in Christ and, and learning how to walk not by compulsion and not in fear, but by the faith of God. And that is what I think is the sure way to actually produce the good works which Christ has prepared us for in advance. All right. So Christ is in me and that life which I I I live is in the flesh, but I live by the faith of the Son of God. None of that sounds risky to me. Um, nor has it ever been. The only time that I that I thought that it was what is was it risky when I was just always in so much like turmoil of trying to figure out if that was God want me to do something or me. <laughs> and it was burdensome. So, you know, um the closest thing that you're gonna find in a, in the New Testament that's concerns um uh, faith and risk being combined is a word that I'm not going to try to pronounce because you know how that goes, but it m- would mean in danger or peril. And in, in, in its context, it's actually uh, persecution. So obeying God may lead to persecution. So, and it's not like persecution that we have now of like, well, you know, you, you don't say this, don't do that or whatever here in America it's and persecution's not that harsh i mean this is this is this is new testament first century roman empire persecution all right you start to proclaim uh proclaim christ crucified and resurrected not just for the jews but for the entire entire hum, human race and the Jews get a mob together and come after you because it was the Jews that were killing the Christian Jews. Um, but they end up, you know, they're all, they're in they're in cahoots with the Roman Empire, and um, so uh, you end up getting arrested, you know, chained and arrested and put in prison, and then eventually beheaded. So, um, simply, I'm just trying to say that in some in some circles and some camps. This whole faith is spelled risk means that that Christians can act in Christ's name without assurance or um, it's almost like a jump off a cliff. Even if you don't hear hear it from the Lord, but you know, he promised to catch you. Well, what if he <laughs> he's not going to catch you if you actually jump off an actual physical cliff? Um, it can lead to performance-based and uh, performance-based gospel, a self-centered gospel. And it's always saying that I can because I'm standing on a, a, just a handful of isolated proof text scriptures that say so. And, um, and, and it goes and marches whether the Holy Spirit is there or not. And uh, I think when we see faith as actually the the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen and some translations say confidence um and substance and evidence then that means it's more sure than your face and your hand in front of your face in, in the dark or it's more sure than than the color of your hair really is what it is faith Faith, faith may look like a risk to onlookers, but in all actuality, the believer should have confidence and assurance because it's that faith. It's the faith of God. That's that's what would makes that's what makes it a wonder. I I believe I believe we should be training ourselves and training others to be more convinced by the invisible reality than just the temporal around us that it, it's this the the assurance of things hoped for the conviction of things not seen right when you take steps of compulsion instead of faith 
it, it becomes a stumbling block. And so what, what, what's really at risk then isn't it, it's it, what's really at, at risk then is, is walking by, by the spirit and in some intimacy with, with, with the actual word, which is Jesus himself. Um, so manufacturing my own or your own faith by picking out a scripture to stand on or to, to decree and declare can actually is more of an invitation of a, 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 a subtle but a vital misunderstanding because faith isn't a force. Faith comes not by a force of my will to believe, but it comes from God's revelation. You know, I simply receive his faith and then it it consumes me. It wants to pour out of me with with a desire of, of agreement with the word of his, his faith. So faith comes by hearing, which is revelation, and hearing by the word when the word is Jesus. So I I don't think faith really is spelled risk. Faith is to me is spelled redemption and salvation and being hidden in Christ and re- and redeemed and faith is grace and mercy and righteousness and peace and joy and that's the kingdom of God and that's what we're invited into through through our faith that brings us to repentance and makes us new and makes us whole and makes us complete and then we're invited to walk into that and walk it out and grow in it and it's not risky at all (laughs) not not one bit not one bit all right there you go there's another episode any questions comments disagreements send them my way at the kingdom project podcast at gmail.com or interact on the facebook group page And until next time, be a mustard seed, be 11. Thanks for listening.